everybody welcome back to another career tutorial today we're going to go over the gradient tool it's been a while since i last talked about it and a lot has changed so might as well do a refresher video to get started um, i have a clean empty layer and the gradient tool is over here on the left next to the eyedropper tool it looks like a gradient within a box so when you click on that you can click and drag and automatically you'll get some sort of gradient undo that. On the tool options you can see a different shapes you can use. You can reverse it, you can use a dither, you can use anti-alias, you can repeat it or not. All that fun stuff. And then up here in the top toolbar, I think this is called the uh, tools and things. Let me make sure. Oh sorry, brushes and stuff. This is called brushes and stuff. You can click here on this gradient with the checker box and you have a bunch of different color options. So this is a custom one that I made. You can go ahead and make some unique ones in here. So before we actually get into the gradient, we're gonna go over a quick segment of just how to make your own custom gradient so you know how to you know, handle that instead of using what is already here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit add. And by default, we see these two colors. So if you click anywhere in this color bar space, you're going to see these little color drops show up. These are going to be your different colors and how the gradient is going to go. So if you click on one, you can see that there's a blue highlight around it. It's going to make this a little wider so we can um, see all these colors better. You click on this color bar here and you can go ahead and start clicking colors. So as you can see, we have a very nice vibrancy to these colors that I picked. You can see what's going on. And if we click and drag any of these color drops, we can move the color around. So if I want the red, whoops, I'm going to trash that. I click the red and put it back near this red, I can do that. If I want it back over by the yellow, I can do that, move it around. I can click the yellow and drag it anywhere else that I want. I'm going to keep it there. So I've got all these colors, looks great. I actually don't like this red, so as you saw before, you can go ahead and trash it if we want, and then click in the middle again to add a different color if we decide we want to put a different color back in. So I'm just going to do a bright pink. Actually, we already have pink. Let's do more magenta. There we go. Looks good. So we can actually change the opacity as well. So let's say we are doing this gradient and we want this area to be transparent as well as this one. We can control the opacity on each color, which is pretty cool. So obviously if the opacity is at zero, it's transparent. So if there's a different layer underneath where I'm going to put this gradient, it will be see-through. I'm actually not going to have any transparency. I'm going to keep everything a solid um, color. And here we can look at the position by a numerical value. So if I want to drag this along here, I can move it somewhere else within the color bar. I can also sort these colors by um, their hue and, and some other things. So this one is going to do the sort by value and the sort by hue. So this is really nice because you can see it kind of goes along with the color wheel. So if we look at the color wheel here, we have the red, the yellow, the green, light blue, blue, uh, more magenta color and a more pinkish reddish color. So it's basically following the color wheel clockwise. And then we can flip the gradient here as many times as we want, which is cool. And we can distribute everything evenly. So let's say I went and I just messed all of this up and I want this to be spaced out, you know, the same space in between each color. I just click this button, it spaces it out for me automatically, it's perfect. And then these arrow keys, so let's say you have a lot of different color little drops down here and it's getting a little hectic to kind of click and pick which one you want. These arrow keys will go through each color. You can see down here that it's changing. So it's easier to figure out which one you're selected on and can change. And so let's say the yellow, I, it, there's a ton of color, we're just gonna pretend here. There's a ton of color drops around the yellow and I wanna move it just a little bit. I can use the arrow keys to select it and then I can use the position to sort of subtly change it. So if I want to say, oops, click, right click on that to change, 17.5, I can do that. Or if I want something a little bit different, I could say 17.35 and move it there. 
So here we have the background and foreground color. So this is going to be the background color. I'm sorry, the foreground color. This is the box there, and then this is the background color. So right now, this is just telling me which color will be the background, which will be the foreground. So the foreground color, I believe, is black. So this changed to black. I want the background color. I can change the background color. I'm going to just delete those because I really don't want them. I'm going to put the yellow back. That looks nice. So what I want to do is I want to name this when I'm done. So I'm going to say custom gradient uh, tutorial just so I know it's for the tutorial and hit enter. You can also hit OK. And automatically it's going to be on the top here. So if I hover over that it says custom gradient tutorial. So if I want to make changes to this I can go and click on edit. And automatically that, that window comes back up and I can make this bigger again and go ahead and start changing things I wanted or how I want to change it. So if you want to name this something different, you can name it tutorial, custom to gradient tutorial too if I go ahead and change some colors around. I'm going to cancel that. Now we can also add some text to it just like the brush docker down here. So if I just add say custom grids so I'm not going to type it all out and I can right click and assign to custom gradient and then go do all untagged actually let me let that load here all right I think it's taking a little bit of time to actually process which is fine it's kind of similar to the brush preset where you might have to close grid and reopen it for this tab to be assigned or just wait a minute and it should show up Oh, there we go. Now it shows up. Okay, it wasn't adding it for some reason. <laughs> Sorry. So now we have that here. So all the custom grads will be there. I have another custom gradient, so I'm going to add that to this tag here. And now we have two. And let's say I don't like any of these, so I'm actually going to go back to all. Let's see here. I think I had some other custom ones. Yes, I did. So we're going to click on this. And we're just going to trash it. So we can delete the resource and then it's gone forever. And then if you want to uh, import a resource, you can go to the import and then wherever your file is, um, SVGs, all that good stuff, you can bring that gradient in. And there, I do have a separate video. You can manage your, manage your resources and import bundles that you've t um, grabbed from other artists or that you've made yourself. So you can bring that back in. Center manage resource library, resource libraries, and manage resources. All right, so we have the gradients. Now we can change the the overall look here, just like the brush presets window. We can do the list view if we want. If you're used to that, then this is easier, and this might actually be more beneficial because you can see all the colors. Or if you just want a icon view, so it's just a very small icon. And you can make it larger or smaller and just pick the ones that are already here. I'm just going to stick with what I had before, which was the custom, and leave it there. And if you want to bring in any of the bundles already, you can actually click on this and it'll automatically list the ones that are already accessible for you in your bundle resource folder. So the red ones are ones that I messed with and I brought in. So. And the crayons as well. So you may not have them or you do. Depends on what you've messed with in the past few months. Alright, so we have another option to add. We can do the stop gradient, which is what most of these nice blended ones are, or we can do a segmented one. And segmented, kind of self explanatory in that it's separated, right? So here we have just a black and white color drop. So we can go ahead and change this to some colors just so you can see what's going on. We'll do a red and a blue. So this is the blend between them, right? We can add a segment here, which is this button here. We duplicate the segment and you can see that we have a harsh separation. So if we want, we can flip this whole gradient, we can um, make the spacing equal between everything. If we want to 
do a center stop we can we can add in some more um, segments here with that scissor tool so I got more color stops here but I can't actually drag them past the center mark it's almost like repeating but not and we can go through and select all the different color drops here just like we could before including the ones on the right here and this we can go ahead and trash that if we want so if we want and I might reset this <laughs> we can get a softer edge or we get a harsher edge here between the two colors and for some gradients you may want that and that's oh you can change the interpolation which is going to be the harshness between the colors so you can see how this is blending a little bit different depending on which one we pick so the sphere it's just completely changed after this point if we add another one in here we change this to pink go here and click on that segment and you can change it to a different type of um, interpolation which is going to affect the way the colors blend or don't blend and we can change all this cool stuff in between this segment it's kind of neat to play with a very different approach to gradients but lots of uh, options you can do there so I'm just gonna hit cancel because I'm not gonna be using that gradient I'm gonna using the one we made here and I'm gonna click and drag and you can see we have this line here if we hit shift it'll be straight and we have our gradient it's perfect type rainbow color bleeding our eyes perfect right so now that we've got our gradient we can go over the different options here I'm just gonna kind of quickly show what each option looks like in a little mini five second slideshow so we don't have to worry about going through it Okay, so I went over the ones that don't require any special settings. The ones that do are going to be the spiral and the radial. So if we go to the radial here, make our gradient, it's pretty bland, right? Obviously, the smaller this line is, the less of an impact that radial gradient is going to have. So we want to look at the repeat. If we do forwards and click and drag, we'll actually just do a small one here it's going to repeat that gradient and it's going to go forward so if we look at our gradient here let's go to edit the red is first and the magenta is last so if we go to undo this hit cancel and we're going to go alternating it kind of changes the the, pet, the order of the colors so it's kind of Doing, all right, it ends at the magenta and then it starts at the magenta and then it ends at the red, and then starts at the red. And if we do the forwards, it's a little different. Once it ends at the magenta, it starts over. Where it's, um, it starts with the red um, as the first color here in the ring. It's a little blinding, I'm sorry about that. And that's going to go with the same with the spiral and the reverse spiral. Um, we have a nice repeating pattern if we don't have that it kind of just stops which we don't really want with a spiral so the alternating and the repeat or the forwards is going to change based on which one you pick so the left will be the first color and going forward from there and then the alternating it will end at the magenta start at the magenta you know all that stuff which is nice you can change the anti-aliasing and you can actually reverse it so let's say we want let's go back to the linear because it's easier to see oh I had the repeating on all right so it starts the red ends in the magenta now it starts with the magenta ends with the red it's pretty neat and then the other just kind of helps um, 
smooth up the gradient. So if you have ever done a gradient where it looks like it's haloing and distorted on your screen, the dither helps blend that a little bit better. If you're working in CMYK or specialized color spaces, I would just keep in mind certain colors may not blend together as well, and usually that's unfortunately purples and blues. It's just the way CMYK works. Alright, so we're going to look at the difference between linear and bilinear. So if I, I'm going to do this a short um, line here so you can see it better. So no matter how short that line is, my whole space of this layer is going to be the colors of that gradient. Whereas bilinear, if I do a short um, line for the gradient, it fills it up, but it kind of mirrors it on the other side. So this nice bright color there is in the middle and dark green is on either side. Another thing I want to point out with shape. So we did see what it looks like automatically. It's going to take on the shape of your layer. So because this layer is very empty, it's just kind of taking on the shape of the canvas, which is a square. So what I'm going to do is make a quick, and we're going to take our selection tool and select inside. I'm going to use a different layer for this. Go back to our gradient. Make sure the shape is on. And you can see that this has taken on the shape of my selection, which is pretty neat. So if I want to do the inverse, I can do select uh, invert selection. And we'll pick a, well, let's pick the rainbow color. It's very nice. And we're gonna just put the gradient in there. Let that load. And it's taking on the shape. You can really see this because you can see down here it's not like leaving it all pink. The edges are kind of close together so this is going to kind of blend together. This is pretty cool. So if you need to make a gradient like for rocks for example, this can fill some things in and give you some very quick shadows um, or maybe certain orbs that you're making for some fantasy setting or even if you're making glass this will help kind of give you a jump start in the shading and lighting. And that's basically it for the gradient tool. So I, this video was a little longer than I've been trying to make the videos, but there was a lot of information worth talking about. Hopefully you learned something in this video and can go back to doing gradients with some confidence and having some fun with it. Uh, I do use gradients myself sometimes when I'm looking for just a quick color to slap down and basic background work and often a lot of things that I don't even remember right now. <laughs> so hopefully this was fun and you learned something new. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next tutorial or video, and I will see you in the next one.